Hello, hello everybody. Welcome on in to My Sweet Home Living. My name is Tracy Campbell. Welcome in. I'm so excited. I get this for the next 45 minutes with you guys here on my page, My Sweet Home Living. And also, we are being streamed, broadcasted over into the Craft Round the Clock group. How exciting is that? We've got tons of creators scheduled t for the rest of today and all tomorrow as well. So come on over and join us over there. We're so excited you're here today. Come let me know that you're here by letting, uh, leaving me a little note down there in that little section down there that lets me know you're here. I'm a little flustered. I had some lighting issues and I still think my screen is like really, really bright. Nothing has changed on my end, so I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Good morning, Penny. Hello, Miss Kim and Ann and Tabitha. Watching from Oregon. So excited you're here. Well, you know I've been um, on this real primitive kick lately, which is kind of my style anyway. But um, I've just kind of been loving these kind of little fallish type projects that are coming that I'm starting to see out. And I'm kind of getting the itch to do a little bit of fall, but I, I'm holding off just a tiny bit longer, just a tiny bit. But I do want to show you guys what I did last week. In case you missed it, you might want to go back and look at the beautiful. I know, Miss Sheila, I have no idea what's going on with my screen today. I don't know. Let me know if that looks, something's really weird. <laughs> something's really weird. That's a, that's a little more normal. I, I mean, nothing's different on my lights. It's so strange, so I don't know what's going on. Um, but we, I created this last week on a live. Last week was Sunflowers Week in Craft on the Clock. And so I used some um, old tobacco sticks from the family barn, and we used some uh, fabric and created these cute little fabric, little primitive style sunflowers with a little sack. Can't see the lights glaring off of our little sunflower label there. Little sunflower label printable there. It was so cute, and I had to show you guys that because I know some of you may have missed it because it was on Friday, the Friday before like a 4th of July weekend, and so many of you were busy doing things. Hello, Miss Mira, watching from Eastern North Carolina. Well, welcome, Cleo. I'm glad you're here. Hello from Oklahoma. So excited y'all are here today. I've got a fun little project for you guys today. Well, I've got everything but the kitchen sink pulled out on my table today. You guys can't see it all just yet, but paper towels. I have, you know, my parchment paper, which I typically like to spread out on my work surface because it's just easy to roll up and throw away. And anyway, cinnamon, coffee, water, <laughs> everything but the kitchen sink today. Hello, Maddie, how are you? Uh, vanilla, okay, so you guys know that when I do primitive style uh, projects, I typically like to grunge my projects with something called Distress Oxide. And because it's just a real neat little shortcut, I think, for me anyway, because I already have that product on hand. But I've been getting lots of questions from you guys. Thank you, Miss Deborah, for those stars. I appreciate you. Hello, hello. Crafty Servings is in the house. Welcome. Hello, Maria from Canada. Glad you all are on here this morning. And Dallas, Texas. We're coming to you next April. Lots of creators are coming uh, to near Dallas next April. We're so excited for that road trip. And there'll be more information uh, posted about that so soon. Good morning, Teresa and Christine. Um, <clears throat> so... Back to what I was saying. I, I forgot for a second. Um, lots of you have been messaging me, asking me, okay, so what if I don't have the Distress Oxide? How can I grunge up, you know, my primitive style vintage, look, you know, projects to make them have that same look? So I'm going to show you the, the tried and true, just traditional way to grunge up your projects. And we're going to create something so cute. <laughs> so cute today. I can't wait to show you. Um, so... Hang tight, hang tight. So we're gonna mix together a little mixture first and then we're gonna get to the project and then we'll put it all together today. We should come to the West Coast. You're right, Tabitha. One day we hope to do so. We sure hope to do so. Um, most, not everyone, but most, the biggest majority of our following um, on my page, My Sweet Home Living and Craft on the Clock, believe it or not, is from like the Texas and Oklahoma area. And so we are venturing out. Usually we stay more like in the central east, east central, east central. Is that even a term? <laughs> you guys know what I mean. Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, uh, Tennessee, uh, that kind of range. 
but we're venturing over to more a little bit more central this time cent south central anyway and going to texas because we just have so many followers that are there we have to hit up texas and then uh maybe we'll venture over to the west coast uh very soon after that um Yes, Mayor is coming. Mayor is coming to Texas. Lots of us are coming to Texas, you guys. So we have, I don't know how many. We probably have 20, 30 creators that are already in the Texas and Oklahoma area. But we also are bringing in about 30 to 40 more <laughs> creators into Texas all in April of next year, guys. So you all mark it down on your calendar. It's the last week of April. Um, and that's that's where we're heading. We're heading to the Dallas area. We're planning on going to Waco to see the silos and everything there, uh, everything Joanna Gaines. <laughs> and um, we're planning on going to Camp and Trade Days. So lots of fun in store. We are planning things now to, because it's going to be a Texas sized, <laughs> Texas sized road trip. So we, we, it's a full week, you guys, a full week. We're so excited. Uh, all right. So let's hop to it. I have a cup, a little, actually I have about a cup and a half of very hot water. Okay. Uh, I actually just ran some hot water through my carrig and filled up this measuring cup. And I'm going to show you how to make up the perfect little primitive grungy mixture that you can use to grunge up your projects first. Good morning, Miss Pat. How are you? Uh, so <clears throat> I have something called instant coffee, you guys. Cheap, just basic instant. You want instant coffee. Um, yeah, this says instant coffee. This is just the Walmart brand. If you want to take a snapshot, woohoo, there we go. Put that on your next grocery pickup. It's super simple and easy to get. Okay, so we are going to use whew, about a half of a cup. And I don't have a measuring cup. I'm just going to guess about a half of a cup. Um, a half a cup to one cup of water. And I have a little bit more than a cup. So I'm going to go a little bit heavy. And, you know, there's no rhyme or reason. There's, if there's not a science to this. So if you want it darker, go heavier on your instant coffee. You want it lighter, more subtle look go lighter on your coffee. Uh, Deborah's planning on coming to Texas in April. Awesome. Miss Pat is flying in from Canada. We're so excited. Miss Pat from Unique. Lots of you guys follow and watch her as well. Um, all right. So now I'm going to add some vanilla. I'm going to add this first and then give it a stir. I add about an ounce of vanilla. You could, it's, it's give or take, you know, an ounce you could do like two tablespoons. It's really up to you guys and go cheap. You know, you don't have to do anything super fancy. Um, I'm going to go a little bit more because I have a little bit more than a cup and um, give that a stir. My puppy is acting like we're hearing thunder. I don't know. We've had thunder all morning, but hardly a drop of rain. A drop, hardly a drop. You guys send some prayers. We need rain so desperately. Um, so three things and our last ingredient is ground cinnamon when uh, Karen it will be probably in the next two or three weeks but go ahead and mark your calendar now for like the last oh we do have some rain it's raining <laughs> praise Jesus yes 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 okay um, it'll be that last week of April so mark that on your calendar for sure all right um, and I'm just going to add cinnamon. There's no set quantity. I like to add about, eh, that's probably about two tablespoons. <laughs> he is nudging my foot. He's get, he's sticking his little nose right under my foot. He gets so nervous. Um, whenever we have rain, thunder, he's just a big baby. I see you, buddy. I see you. Good boy. I see you. You're okay. <laughs> And he would probably crawl up here in my lap if he could fit. Um, but he is a giant border collie, about 60 pounds of him. Um, and I'm just giving this a good stir. Okay, woohoo, I'm splattering it everywhere. Where my paper towels go? No, oh, there they are, they're hiding from me. Um, we got rain yesterday, oh good. Well, you know what's so funny is we had, I was actually live yesterday in a meeting uh, with some fellow creatives and um we had thunder that came out of nowhere it thundered and i thought for sure we were going to have a big downpour it never rained a drop 
never rained a drop. And then this morning around 4 a.m., we had more thunder rolling in. I thought, oh, good, 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 good. This is going to be our rain. No, <laughs> we still didn't get any rain. It just like barely skimmed right northeast of us. So we just missed every rain that's come through lately, and everything is so dry. All right, so I'm just giving that a good stir, and that's your mixture, okay? Now, you can keep this in the refrigerator, just reheat it, because we know heat sets stain better. So uh, you would want to reheat it, kind of stir it, you know, redistribute the, the ingredients together before you reuse it, okay? So you can store and, and reuse this, okay? Um, the longer it sits, the darker it will get, all right? Um, okay, Marsha, you're in Grant County. I can't remember can't remember exactly which Grant County, where Grant County is. Um, I am uh, near Owensboro, near Davis County, if you're familiar with that area. Okay, we're gonna set that aside. Our next step, you guys. I've got some cute little primitive, sort of like ticking fabric. Let me show you what that looks like, material. Okay, um, I think I grabbed this probably at Hobby Lobby if I had to guess. I've had this stashed away just waiting for the perfect little project and today's going to be it. Um, I am going, I still haven't told you guys what I'm making today. Um, I am going to make some cute, I'm trying to think which way I want my lines to go before I cut my little pattern out here. Um, now, lines be careful I, I don't know lines could be the death of me here because um and actually i don't need this cookie sheet just quite yet i'm gonna set that right over here maybe <laughs> uh, my fur baby here is kind of blocking my floor space okay i'm gonna fold this let me set these things coffee and the cinnamon and the vanilla off to the side it's smelling amazing in here right now um okay Today's pattern that I am using is available from a, a very talented designer on Etsy. Her shop is called Peach Bottom Primitives. I have used one of her patterns before um, when we made this little project right here. Ooh, let me pull this out. This cute little uh, primitive style little sheep, okay? Uh, this was one of her patterns, I believe. I think that's right, Peach Bottom Primitives. Um, and she has a Etsy shop and uh, beautiful, beautiful patterns and just so my style. You know, I love things vintage and primitive, anything grungy, rusty, <laughs> it just speaks to me. Um, hello, hello, the Black Farmhouse. Tell me what your name is so I can make sure I can't remember. I know your page name, I'm just not familiar with your name. I wanna make sure I know who you are. Hello, Miss Jane. So we are making, a, well, this is, this is the title of her pattern. It's a primitive, grungy, little prairie dress orny okay now i printed this pa i printed this out in black and white on my printer because my printer's out of ink right now other than just like bas basic black uh, but it comes in like a three page downloadable printable thing here okay comes with the pattern it comes with all kinds of uh step-by-step -step directions a supplies list gives her tips for staining and and all kinds of things sometimes i kind of cut it and do my own little thing, which is probably what I'm gonna do a little bit of today. Um, because most of her patterns, uh, where did my scissors go, you guys? <laughs> Heaven help me. Um, because a lot of her patterns she uses, um, she sews her patterns is what I'm trying to say. I'll spit it out in a second. My brain is just a little delayed. <laughs> um, but I, I don't, I don't sew. I mean, I've got a sewing machine. I just don't use it, right? Um, but I, I like to redo everything the simplest and the most easy way possible. Um, so, let's see. Hey, Miss Melissa. Hey, Miss Wendy and Debbie. I was looking to see Jana from the Black Farmhouse. Okay, well, glad to have you here, Jana. New here, Rhonda. Awesome. You are from Owensboro. Well, hot dog, we've probably seen each other in passing before. <laughs> yes, we probably have. Probably if you are a Hobby Lobby junkie like I am. Oh, yes, I've probably re walked right past you, I'm sure. <laughs> if you see me out, stop me uh, so we can meet. So this is the last page of the pattern. You can print it out on your home printer. This, um, here we go. That's what it's 
Peach Bottom Primitives by Denise Jones Primitive Mini Prairie Dress Warning. This is the pattern that we're going to cut out real quick. There's lots of straight lines, which is going to make it really easy. Um, so I'm just going to cut out this little dress. And what she, um, what she suggests is to put this on the fold of your material to, to trim your pattern, okay? All right, now, this is what the pattern looks like. It's a half dress, which is why you're gonna place it on the fold of your uh, material. Now, like I said, I do not sew. <laughs> so I am going to attempt to uh, use fabric glue for mine, but you want the right sides of your material facing each other. Now, unless you're using something like homespun or like this ticking material, it's the same on both sides. <laughs> so that takes the guesswork out of it for you. <laughs> Good morning, Smithwood and Treasures. Tell me your name so I get to know you. Thank you for being here. Hello, Melba and Rula. Welcome, so excited y'all are here. So I'm just gonna fold a little bit of my uh, material over, make sure my lines kind of are lined up here. <laughs> That's why I said these lines may be the death of me. Let me kind of tilt my camera down so you guys can see what we're doing. Hello, Miss Brenda. Whoop, whoop shaking you guys sorry about that all right so you're going to take your pattern okay uh, it says to place this on the fold um hmm i don't know we're going to go with it and see you guys can um watch this flop or watch it fly <laughs> all right so just a quick snip uh, around this pattern and the great thing about primitive crafts as you guys know they're super forgiving, super forgiving because, you know, things add character, right? And if they're supposed to be old and grungy, then, you know, things aren't perfect anymore, right? So, <laughs> it's the perfect project to kind of um, not worry about perfection. And I'm just kind of going as, cutting as I go here, and we'll kind of have to clean it up probably a little bit. Um all right, I am going to need to cut out two of these for front and back, and then um, we'll put these together to make the little dress, but first we have to do the little coffee stain. Remember that little mixture that I showed you guys just a minute ago? If you are just hopping on and you miss the mixture, the coffee mixture, I'll go back over that in just a minute because I've had so many people asking me, well, if, I, you know, I use the distressed oxides a lot of times to grunge up my uh, projects, right? Um, I'm just gonna cut this by, by eye here. And that might be a mistake because I need a matching piece for the back. <laughs> we'll work this. All right. Um, okay, there's, there's the front. That's cute already. And all I did was le I left the bottom edge unfinished. And I probably will pull some of those threads off and kind of get that little raveled look. Just, just the way I am. Um, but uh, what was I saying? Oh, the Distress Oxides. That's what I typically use for my little shortcut to grunge my projects with when I'm doing primitive style stuff. But a lot of you may not have those. And so I was getting lots of questions, you know, well, Show me how you coffee, you know, show me how to coffee stain it. Show me how to grunge it, you know, a traditional way. So that's what we did. I showed you guys at the very beginning of today's video. So if you missed the first few minutes, you might want to go back and catch that on the replay. Um, and I'll go back over that here in just a little bit. It's super easy. It's um, a cup of very hot water. Um, about... Mm, about two tablespoons of vanilla. You could go less or more. About two tablespoons of vanilla. It also depends on the strength of your vanilla, obviously. And then I do about mm, about a tablespoon, two tablespoons of cinnamon. And stir that up. And then that's what your solution is to um, coffee stain your... This is giving me fits, you guys. <laughs> the coffee stain your material. Isn't it cute, Darlia? Yes. Yes. It's the perfect... It's the perfect fabric for this. Now, you know, I, I'm i not super big into Christmas in July, but one could possibly say this little project could be a little Christmassy. Could be. 
if you dress it up that way, you know. Uh, and I'll show you with this little red ticking fabric, it could totally be um, something cute for fall. Could be something really cute, you know, for, you know, like we've just went through the patriotic, the 4th of July, could get carried all the way through the fall into Christmas. You could really keep it out all year long, honestly. Or you could make it your own color. I mean, this comes, this same material comes in lots of different color variations. Black, navy, I've even seen a green. I've seen like a, a brownish um, color. Did I say black already? So there's lots of options. You don't have to do, just use what you have and you can use any kind of fabric. Um, and it doesn't take a whole lot of fabric for this little pattern. So if you have some scraps and you need something, you know, to create with it, this would be the perfect little project because you're not using much fabric at all. Um, okay, get this little, this little armhole cut and then I'll show you what we have. So we should have two matching pieces, which I must have just dragged the other one off. Where did it go? There it is. Okay. Okay, so piece one and piece two. Now this actually already has a coffee stained look to it. And I think, now that I'm thinking about it, I think I may have purchased it and I think it did say that actually on, um, on the bolt when I bought it. So uh, the bottom of my dress is uneven, but I will go and fix that later. Okay, I'm not too worried about that right now. Just as long as your pieces uh, match up shape-wise. <laughs> okay, two pieces, here we go. We're putting them right straight together. You don't have to worry about um, your coloration being too much because this type of material, the color and the pattern is the same on both sides, which makes it super nice and easy to work with, okay? Now, what you will want is some fabric glue sticks, okay? Um, I use them all the time. In fact, I just had to order me some more because I can't find <laughs> my pouch of glue sticks, my fabric glue sticks. So I'm using regular hot glue today, but I would recommend fabric glue sticks because it will last longer and that's what you're wanting, especially if you want to, hey Tisha from Arizona, thank you for sprinkling. Um, that's what you will definitely want to use if you want to make and sell these. These are perfect little mini th items that you could make and sell, um, either in an Etsy shop or um, at a craft, you know, fair, anything like that. Okay. So, um, so yeah, if you want durability, longevity, <laughs> then that's what I would recommend. All right. So I have put my two pieces together and thank you, Miss Dawn. I'm going to go around the edges. I have a little bit of overhang right here. Let me trim that off because I'm afraid that's going to throw me off a little bit. Um, I'm going to go around the inside edge of this pattern, this shape, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna cinch, cinch down. Is that even a word? Really? No. I'm gonna glue down the edges of this, just like you would if you were sewing. Okay? You know how you would make your seams, your outer seams. Then we would turn it right side out, and you would have your little dress. Well, we're gonna do this with glue, because. We're no so around here. <laughs> We're no so around here. Oh my gracious, someone sent me more stars. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I missed who did that. I'm going to have to go back and look. All right, so I am going to run whoop, this way. I am going to run my bead of glue fairly close to the edge, okay? Keep in mind that you want to leave your armholes open. <laughs> I mean, you know, just like you think of a shirt, you know, your armholes, your sleeve holes rather, um, need to stay open. I'm not gonna do a lot of smashing, I'm just gonna pat it because I don't want my glue to smear out and make my lines totally irregular, which is why some people don't use glue when it comes to this kind of thing. Um, but we can make it work. We can m totally make it work. I am gonna leave the little neckline open as well. So you do not want to run any of your glue through the neckline. We're gonna make an adorable little hanger for that in just a little bit. So start at the edge of your neckline and go down. I'm gonna need another glue stick here in just a little bit. Try to keep your, your line of glue consistent and that will also help um, prevent any kind of irregularities in, in the, 
seam <laughs> of your item. Good morning, Miss Tammy from Crafty Peep. How are you? Is that warm glue because it's plugged in? Yes, it is warm glue, but now listen, I would recommend to use fabric glue sticks, okay? You can get the Sherbonder fabric glue sticks um, anywhere, at any craft supply store or online even. Um, that's what I would recommend to use, okay? Especially if this is something that you want to make and sell, which is totally doable. And um, while I'm thinking about it, if you, you can create your own pattern, you know, you can make this in any size. I need another glue stick. Make this in any size, um, varying sizes, to any kind of theme. I mean, you, you, you can really kind of go crazy with this. <laughs> you know, make it your own. Um, oh, 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 oh. And then what you can do, um, you know, make your own variation of patterns. However, I will tell you um, that the designer that I purchased this from, Peach Bottom Primitives on Etsy, her name is Denise, um, all of her patterns right now are like 70% off on, on Etsy. So if you go over there and you find them, um, you can really, a dollar something for the pattern. Like, that was worth the trouble of just, I don't know. For me, it was easy, a dollar. Now, sometimes they're not on sale, and that, you know, then you might be a little more likely to create your own pattern. Um, but I thought for a dollar or something, yes. <laughs> and I always like to support creative, so it was just a good little, perfect little situation there. I'm almost finished. We're going to go down this right side of this little dress, and then we're going to turn it right side out. Because I, for this little project, I do not want the seams, you know, a lot of times the, the little bowl fillers that I have made in the past, I'm okay. This little glue stick is not wanting to work. Um, a lot of times I like that raveled, roughed edge, you know, that unfinished edge. But for this, I think I want it smooth. So we're going to try to turn it wrong side out and get right side out. Uh, I am. I'm using regular glue gun. This is just a little mini hot glue stick. I like the mini uh, because it, anything with a smaller tip because it's easier to control your stream of glue coming out. And I like that for fabric projects because I like to have a little bit more control of how much comes out, where it goes, because I don't want a lot of glue coming out because when you go to press down, you know, your layers of fabric, it will, you know, it smushes out that glue and it can make your seams kind of irregular, okay? And then you also get that lumpy, bumpy glue. Good morning, Miss Debbie, how are you? Uh, hello, Miss Sheila. How are you? Miss Connie, you're a newbie. Welcome. So all I'm going to do is turn this right side out, okay? And it's going to look, if I, if I did my glue right now, sometimes you have to kind of go back and touch it up. If I did it right, my little, um, my seams, <laughs> my faux seams will look uh, just as if they were sewed without the, without the stitching. Um, it's easier to separate a glue. Yeah, I just have a separate glue gun that I typically use for that exact reason um, because I don't like to mix the glues. Okay, I just need to get this little arm, this little sleeve pulled out and I don't wanna yank it too much. I don't wanna pull apart our seams. Fabric glue it will work perfect for this little project, you guys. Now, if you have something like a fabric glue, now most fabric glues take a lot longer to dry which, you know, for my purpose, I can't do that now. I did, I went, <laughs> this one kind of has come loose because I went a little too thin, I guess, with my bead of glue and it has kind of come apart, but that's an easy fix. No biggie. For now, we'll leave it. Um, okay, one more little sleeve and we'll have partially finished. Partially, partially. Come on, little sleeve. Okay. And then I am going to dip this down in my little coffee, my little grunge mixture. Even though it already has um, it al already has this uh, coffee stain, tea stain look to it, I'm still going to dip it again. Uh, because I like, I like the blotchiness sometimes. I like the, I don't know. It looks like you've just pulled it out of, of your grandmother's attic <laughs> kind of look. That's what I what I usually say. Hey, Miss Michelle. Hello, Yvonne. We almost have 200 people in the house today. Hot dog, you guys. That's awesome. Thank you so much for being here. I am trying to pull this little arm hole, this arm sleeve out. <laughs> it was giving me fits. Um, 
I have a little stick here that we're going to use for the next little step in a minute. See if I can't use that to kind of feed it on out of there. My fingers are so chubby. <laughs> That's part of my problem. Um, pulling this out is a is a task. Uh, hello, Miss Nana's Country Reef. Miss Nana Jinx is in the house. Good morning, Okie Girls. Jerda is in the house. Thank you all for showing up today. Y'all are awesome. Um, where did I get the pattern? Okay, I will. If you want the pattern link, I can definitely put it in the comments. But if you go to Etsy, uh, the shop that I found it is called um, Peach Bottom Primitives. Okay, that's the name of her shop on Etsy. And she has the cutest little uh, patterns. And this one is on sale for like 70% off. I think regular is like five or six dollars. It's 70% off. It's like a dollar and something. So it's super affordable right now to just, just download it and print it off. Okay, now I got to touch this little armhole up where it didn't glue a second ago or came loose rather. Okay. That'll do for right now. Okay, so there it is. Now I would probably want to iron this flat, okay? But we already have a cute little primitive style dress. Now I'm just gonna dip this down in this coffee mixture, this instant coffee. If you missed it, a cup of hot water, um, about two tablespoons of cinnamon, and about two tablespoons of vanilla, okay? You can save and reuse it, put it in your refrigerator in an airtight container, reuse it. It does get darker the longer it sets, okay? Uh, good morning, Ruth. How are you? Hey, Miss Tammy. How are you? Miss Teresa from Jeremiah Dreams. So happy y'all are here. Now, it's going to look really grungy, you guys. I probably should have brought my clean water over here to wash this off with because you guys are probably going to freak out. Let me get my cookie sheet out because this is going to be messy. Do you see why now I use the... Uh, the uh, Tim Holtz, the oxides, yes, <laughs> it's so much easier without, but you don't, you don't get the amazing aroma of the coffee and vanilla and cinnamon, right? Uh, but I wanted to show you guys the traditional way of grunging up primitive style um, projects so that you could do it if you wanted to without having the, 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 um, uh, what am I saying? The, the oxides, okay? All right, so I'm gonna pull this out. I so should have brought my gloves. I got some. I got some right over here. Let me grab them. Um, oh my gracious, time is like flying, you guys. Oh my goodness, we're gonna have to speed this along in a hurry. I don't even know if we're gonna get finished. I was just having fun. <laughs> and I just happened to look at the clock. Whew. Whoa, we got 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Hello, Miss Charlotte. Hello, Miss Darlene. All right, take this out. I would run this under the faucet, okay, to kind of rinse off the extra, okay? Squeeze it out the best you can. You will want to wear gloves for this. <laughs> you want to, your hands will smell amazing, <laughs> but you may be grunging your hands at the same time. <laughs> All right, so. Now, this still has grungy cinnamon on it so once this dries the cinnamon you can flake off a little bit if it's too much um, but you want that to kind of sit you can sit it out in the sun you can put it in the oven uh, at a very low temperature about 250 um, on some parchment paper on a cookie sheet just like this there um, I would recommend you don't want this to dry like like flat as a pancake. <laughs> so what I typically do is I take my aluminum foil and I put just a, a like a two or three layer sheet of like aluminum foil up in between the layers of my dress, okay? Let me scoot this back, of my dress. And that way it kind of helps to separate the layers as it dries. And then it also helps to give it a little bit of, um, a little bit of different shape to it so that it's not just so flat, okay? So let me show you what I mean. So just take a piece of foil, fold it so that it's narrow enough to fit up inside your little dress or whatever project you're doing. You can use this same, this same idea for lots of different projects, okay? Um, I'm just giving you some tips. Okay, 
so I've kind of folded so it kind of has a little bit of thickness to it um, and I'm just going to stick this up in between the layers of my dress sort of like you're stuffing it um, and I may have made that a little too wide okay you're propping it up basically on that foil sticking it all the way up in there and um, I need to kind of go a little bit farther and that way it kind of gives it a little bit of shape as it's drying okay and you can even do the same to the sleeves to the arm sleeves if you'd like okay now what you're gonna do is stick that in the oven for 250 degrees I do not have a set time but you have to check it periodically um, because you don't want it to burn obviously 250 is very low it's just enough heat to let it dry I'm just gonna stick my heat gun to it it will uh, give it a little bit of stiffness and character to it we have 198 let's see if we can get to 200 that would be so awesome y'all would make my day um, so let it dry and while that's drying I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna finish it off mine probably will not be dry in time um, I like to use like uh, some sweet Annie I'm out of it and I can't find any more right now so I just have this little garland that I that looks really similar Ooh, this same little garland that you see over here I love this it kind of has a rustyish color of, to the green to it it's a little brighter on camera there is little brown undertones to this so what I'm gonna do is just put a couple little sprigs with this I'm gonna take um, a couple layers of cheesecloth and this is gonna be uh, for the little apron front okay just cut out two little rectangles now you could go with cheesecloth so you could go with burlap you know either way um, whatever you have just gonna cut a little haphazardly cut a little rectangle to use for the apron if I make it too big I can go in and trim it later uh, but this cheesecloth it, it, it has already been coffee stained coffee dyed uh, it's a little brighter than what I have on there but that's okay I kind of like the contrast okay so while that's drying I'm dropping stuff okay so I'm gonna take I have over here somewhere where did it go yes um, I would take a, just a little thin bead of fabric glue right here where the apron top would go kind of kind of gather it a little bit I'm gonna see Man, it's still really wet I don't know if this will work just put a little thin line of glue across here you would obviously do this when, when yours is dry okay um, kind of pinch pleat it okay kind of pinch pleat it together tap it down so that that glue sticks to the cheesecloth but doesn't come doesn't show you know once you don't want to smash it through the cheesecloth so much that it that you see it from the front okay trim that off now I have a little rusty safety pin and a little rusty bell that I'm going to use to kind of embellish the top part right here of the apron so, but if you do have glue that pops through this is the perfect little um, trick to hide it gonna pin that right at the top now you can add some cute um, little buttons at the top add a little button or two at the top that would be adorable um, but all I'm gonna do <laughs> is take this in a little bit of twine where my twine go <laughs> oh we're gonna run out of time you guys no we're gonna we're gonna finish it we're gonna finish it okay this little piece of twine is a little wonky I'm cut that off so what I would do is take this put a little bow or just a little tie this is a little bit long a little bit longer for my liking I'll trim that off now you can put a little dab of hot glue right there if you want to glue that down I don't think I'm gonna do that just yet I think I'm gonna tie it put a little knot um, a little hanger you can totally make a little hanger out of um, wire rusty wire or you can use a little uh, stick which I'm gonna do in just a minute because if you want to make these for little ornaments which you totally could do um, the, the safety pin how did I rest it I use um, 
self or uh, adhesive spray and cinnamon okay that's how I rest I just put it I buy a box of safety pins spread them out like on a cookie sheet sort of like this with some parchment paper um, spray them with uh, adhesive sprinkle them with cinnamon spray them again with um, adhesive to kind of seal that cinnamon on and that's how I rest them up I do the same thing with my bells okay um, let's glue this down I put a little um, bow right there with um, with that greenery Whew, that hot that heat tool is hot tamale okay now mine is still drying you would want to wait till yours your little dress is completely dry um, let me get my little stick here and I'm going to show you guys where's my little stick go all right so just get a little branch a little branch from your yard you want it about the width from shoulder to shoulder on your dress okay so it and it's even better if your your stick has just a slight little curve in it. Uh, hi, Miss Jennifer, how are you? I got to see the beginning of your project while ago, but I didn't get to finish. I'm gonna have to go back and watch yours. Um, I had to get ready. I was like scrambling to get stuff ready, and you know how that goes. You know how that goes. So the middle of my um, stick, I'm going to tie this down make a little loop and pull it up okay this is going to be my little hanger okay stick it in this side oh this smells amazing you guys i'm gonna to have to go up through the bottom though um the neck on this little dress isn't big enough for me to the bottom part's already getting really good and dry um while we've been sitting here but you can put it in your oven flip it as needed and let it dry in the 250 degree oven um, and that's you can dry it that way where did that little string go come on and when it dries it will have a stiffness to it which also helps it hang so cute okay these are perfect little make and sell items you guys these are perfect little ornaments they can be ornaments and hang them um, on a little uh, shelf okay oh this is so cute so cute okay <laughs> so cute I love it so simple okay my little cheesecloth needs to go over a little bit farther but is that not adorable a little adorable little dress and it's so it, it smells amazing I wish there was smell vision I wish there was smell vision I'm just gonna continue to dry it your, your cinnamon is going to dry and be a little powdery. If it's a little too blotchy for you, you can take a little brush, a little bristle brush, and just kind of uh, brush over it, and it will brush off any extra excess cinnamon, okay? Um, and there you go. Is that not amazing? I love it. I love it so much. Um, and so you can make these in all kinds of different styles. Make it your own. Make these little gifts. You can put little name tags on them. You could put a little hang tag at the top if you want. Uh, put some little buttons up here at the top would look cute. You can embellish it with a little bit of lace around the neckline if you want. Yes, the, the possibilities are endless, you guys. So listen, I want you all to head over to Craft on the Clock and see all of the creatives that we have coming for you today. It's going to be an amazing, the rest of the week is going to be amazing. Next week we have Grocery Trash to Treasure theme week gonna be so much fun so much fun all right i will see you guys again soon thanks for being here today